Conservation Ag Update is brought to you by Montag Manufacturing. Hello and welcome to the first Conservation Ag Update of 2024. I'm Noah Newman. Hope everyone enjoyed the holidays. I know I did. I feel like I'm about 10 pounds heavier. Ate too many Christmas cookies. Very exciting week ahead though as the 32nd Annual National No-Tillage Conference kicks off in Indianapolis. The Super Bowl of No-Till, as I like to call it, will feature presentations from innovators like Paul Yassa, who's been studying no-till for almost half a century. Now, Paul is going to be talking about a systems approach to soil health and the benefits of a diverse rotation, as he explains to our McCain Vogel here. Take a listen. The more uh, diversity you get in the rotation, uh, the better you're going to feed the soil system. And that's where a lot of producers now are relying on cover crops to do that for them. And as if, for instance, I've got a set of research blossoming in corn soybean rotation for a number of years, I uh, seed a cover crop uh, of cereal rye and Austrian winter peas. Uh, the, the corn and the wheat are, or, I'm sorry, the cereal rye are both grasses, one cool season, one warm season. The Austrian winter peas and soybeans are both legumes, one cool season, one warm season. I've got all four crop types in a real simple corn soybean rotation, actually oscillation, with their rotation effect coming from the cover crop as well. And so again, when it comes to the diversity, uh, if it's not in your cash crops, put it in your cover crops. And it's just like you and I, when we go to the buffet at a restaurant, um, we don't eat all on the salad bar. We don't eat all on the meat course. We like a variety of things. Well, sort of as our soil, our soil microbes. We want to feed it a variety of systems. Looking forward to hearing more from Paul next week, and there's still time to sign up. Head to notillconference.com if you're interested in going to the conference. We are going inside the cab for this week's Farmer Feature. Managing Editor Michaela Paulkner did a ride-along with Wisconsin grower Adam Frymoth as he was custom combining a no-tiller's corn crop. So he talks about how his conventionally tilled soybeans compared to no-till soybeans that he harvested in 2023. I would say for the most part, our soybeans weren't that great. Uh, I did do some soybeans for a friend of mine that were no-till. It was a longer day bean, so I don't know if that had something to do with it than everything else we were running, but it was five to six bushel better. Okay. That's kind of what I, I planted one variety of 2.9 beans like he had, which our area that's really long, and I had about that same four to five better. Adam also shared some tips for harvesting corn and maximizing the combine's fuel efficiency. It's John Deere head as a folding chopping. Okay. So it, it's, it's in, intermeshing rolls, so they work like a gear. Okay. Some of them are knife to knife. I don't like those because they, they don't seem to last as long. These, when they're wore out, you can still be using them because it, it grabs the stalk better. Or the knife to knife, as soon as that wears out, it, it, it doesn't pull them through. Okay. How often do you have to replace that? Probably four years. Okay. There's $550 a roll, and there's 24 of them on the head. So it, it gets expensive yeah, fast. Yeah, that's a really quick. Try to do this on the move because. We're burning 11 gallons of fuel an hour right now just unloading, so we try to be wow. picking while we... Yeah. Which doesn't seem like long, but throughout the day, if you do this a lot... Yeah. You waste a lot of fuel. Off. I would say most of the time, while we're picking, I have the stock shredders turned, or the, the chopping part turned off, so we're probably saving three, four gallons an hour on that. Okay. But otherwise, we're at 22 to... 24 gallons an hour. Thank you very much, Adam. We appreciate you giving us a peek behind the curtain. Now let's send it over to Baltimore Ravens fanatic McCain Vogel for this week's Cover Crop Connection. Thanks, Noah. McCain Vogel here with this week's Cover Crop Connection. I had the opportunity to visit with Brandon, Minnesota farmer John Lederman and check out his unique strategy for planting cereal rye and corn. And this is two rolls of cereal rye and then here's my clear roll. So I did this with the drill. And I guess the way I've got it, I'm putting fertilizer down at the same time. So you can figure there's, I want 22 inch rows. So I got three rows, two rows of cereal rye and one row without. And what I do is I kind of break my fertilizer like it would be in four parts. 
So one part will go here, one part will go here, and then two parts will go here where the corn row going. So, and then uh, the, the drill there again, it's frozen, but the drill kind of makes almost a little bit of a strip there. So um, my theory is just to get a little more fertilizer by the, by the corn row, but hopefully not too much that I burn it. So I, I shoot for three inches deep with, the, with this row, but uh, you know, sometimes it's hard in the fall. You don't always get that three inches. Liederman says he'd like this strategy to be done on all of his corn acres, but time doesn't always allow for it. This past season, he was able to plant about a quarter of his corn acres using this strategy, and he says that those acres were actually easier to plant into despite the extra time that it takes. That's all for this week's Cover Crop Connection. Until next time, I'm McCain Vogel. Back to you, Noah. Thank you very much, McCain. Well, he's done it again. David Hula, in case you missed it before the holidays, has set a new corn yield record of 623.84 bushels per acre. The Charles City, Virginia strip tiller is the only farmer in the NCGA yield contest history to break the 600 bushel barrier, and this is now the third time he's done it. He planted a Pioneer 114-day hybrid designed for the dry grind ethanol market. Hula added 575 pounds of nitrogen, 156 pounds of phosphorus, 480 pounds of potassium, 12 pounds of boron, and 80 pounds of sulfur per acre spread across the growing season. When we were looking at the P14830 as something to put into a high yield environment, the thing that really attracted our attention was the ear placement on that corn as well as the plant height. And then to have it perform just like they had projected, that just goes to give me that extra bit of confidence when we start thinking about buying seed for next season. Hula shared some of those keys to growing a high-yielding crop at last year's National No-Tillage Conference, and we have a recap article from that presentation on notillfarmer.com. Check it out. Time now to go ahead of the curve, and this week we're spotlighting a product that saved growers an average of 42 pounds of nitrogen per acre. It's called In Time from Sentinel Fertigation. Company founder Jackson Stansell shows us how it works. It's really tailored to those that are applying uh, fertilizer in season. What we do is we ingest satellite imagery from two different sources. We primarily rely on near daily satellite imagery from planets. We analyze that satellite imagery to isolate the impact of nitrogen on yield potential, quantify a nitrogen sufficiency index that puts a number on nitrogen, and ultimately provide a seven day crop demand for nitrogen outlook. We then turn those into recommendations to either apply or not apply more nitrogen fertilizer and provide a rate prescription for the application to make it tailored to your crop's actual yield potential in season. We don't require yield goals. We don't require estimated nitrogen applied. And these, uh, this, this software has been proven to improve nitrogen use efficiency by 25% versus what farmers are doing today, giving you great opportunities for profit improvements as well as productivity improvement. All right, let's wrap up the program with the photo of the week. And this one comes to us from Eric Odberg in Genesee, Idaho. So he says 2023 was his first year diving into regenerative agriculture in a region where he doesn't see a lot of cover crop usage. He grazed 800 goats on 195 acres of cover crops which you can see in the distance there. He didn't specify the species, but he says the covers worked well in a fairly dry year, and he's planning on using canola next spring. He hopes to get a lot of organic nitrogen from that canola. And we hope that you keep sending your photos to us. Send me an email at innewman at lesspub.com. That'll do it for this edition of Conservation Ag Update. Thanks for spending part of your busy day here with us, and I hope to see you next week at the National No-Tillage Conference in Indianapolis. Have a great day.